want to tell you the Apostle Paul talking about prayer in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He says, whatever you're anxious about, pray about it. You, you want to know how big a deal it's got, it's got to be before you ask God with respect to it? It's got to be big enough to make you worry. So if you're sitting in a line of traffic and you're late for work and that's got you anxious, then you pray about it. You know, if you're struggling to understand world history, and you got a test coming up, then you pray about it. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about it. Hi, I'm Jim Nicodine. I love to pray, and I love to equip people to become prayers. Probably the most significant lesson I've learned about prayer over the years is that prayer is not so much about me getting things from God as it is about me drawing close to God. And prayer has contributed more to my intimacy with God than perhaps any other spiritual discipline. And prayer has contributed immensely to the growth of Christ Community Church over the years as we've seen hundreds of people come to know Christ in a personal way. Oftentimes when I'm speaking on the topic of prayer, I'll ask my audience, uh, how many of you are satisfied with your prayer lives? And I've yet to see a single hand go up. Uh, prayer is one of those things uh, we'd like to do better, we know we should do, but we need help, we need coaching. Let's suppose that you want to improve your golf game. And so someone gives you a book on golf. It's one of those coffee table type books. It's got beautiful pictures of the most gorgeous golf courses around the world. It's got short bios of great golfers like Tiger Woods. It's got the rules of the game. Is any of that gonna help your golf game improve? I seriously doubt it. What I need, I need someone to take me to the course and help me straighten out my drives. I need someone to help me hit a wood in the fairway. I need someone to help me stop four putting greens. That's the kind of help we need in our prayer lives. Just recently, one of the leaders in the National Day of Prayer movement told me that Prayer Coach is the book on prayer that he's going to be recommending others. Both beginners and veteran prayers are going to benefit from this book. I've jokingly told people that one of the best aspects of Prayer Coach are the endorsements. A wide variety of folks, from uh, Bill Hybels to Franklin Graham from Samaritan's Purse, uh, D.A. Carson, one of the foremost New Testament scholars in the country, uh, Hall of Fame linebacker Mike Singletary, Matt Daly, a vocalist for the rock band Super Chick, Lee Strobel, world-renowned apologist. Uh, I wa wanted a wide variety of people so everyone would know this book is for you. I keep telling folks, read Prayer Coach slowly put its principles into practice before moving on to a new chapter. Uh, or better yet, do it as a family or do it in a small group context because prayer is an important part of community. This makes for a great small group's curriculum. Bill Donahue recently gave away 30 to 40 copies of Prayer Coach to some of the key small groups directors around the country when they gathered at Willow Creek Church for the annual small groups conference. If you're a youth pastor, consider using this in youth ministry. Tim Downey, who teaches youth ministry at Moody Bible Institute, says this is the tool youth pastors have been waiting for to train their young people how to pray. There's an old saying that goes, when I work, I work. But when I pray, God works. Would you like to see God work in the lives of your kids? Then you gotta pray for your children. There's a whole chapter in Prayer Coach on how to pray for your kids. Would you like to see God work in the life of your church and the lives of Christian leaders? There's a whole chapter in Prayer Coach on how to pray for Christian leaders. Would you like to see God work in the lives of your friends who are spiritually lost? There's a whole chapter in Prayer Coach on how to pray for those who are lost. When I pray, God works. God wants to hear from you this week. He wants you to be specific and He wants you to be passionate. He wants you to start praying in greater depth and a greater length. He wants you to pray because praying draws you closer to Him, and that's what He's after more than anything else. Can you imagine if we released the thousands of people who come each Sunday to Christ Community Church, if we released them into our community as greater prayers this week, what would happen? Supernatural things would happen because God would be invited into the whole process. Isn't that what you want? It's what I want for my life.